um, call the meeting to order. I'll call the meeting to order at five o'clock. And um, please let me begin by reading for the last time the script for remotely conducted meetings. So as a preliminary matter, this is the Grafton Board of Library Trustees. And permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated are present and can hear me. Uh, Marty? Present. All right. Doug? Uh, here. John? Here. And Dana? Here. Okay. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Beth? Here. And Debbie. Okay. Uh, Debbie, I can. All right. I think we can all say she's here. We just can't hey, hear her. I, are you using my mic too? All right. Well, <laughs> all right. I think it's pretty obvious she's here. Okay. All right, and so good afternoon. This open meeting of the Grafton Board of Library Trustees is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public meetings, and as such, we, uh, hold on, uh, we, all right. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you will find on the town's website, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. For this meeting, the Grafton Board of Library Trustees is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website. For Zoom meetings, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this body and are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. We are now turning to the first agenda item, but before I do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our meetings and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go down the list of line of members inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions, please hold until your name is called. And further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate min min meeting minutes. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. All right. And finally, each vote for this meeting will be conducted by roll call. So we can get started. Our first agenda for the evening is to approve the minutes for the March 22nd and April 26th meetings. Uh, can I get a motion on those? I I make a motion to approve approve the meetings from the, the previous um, meetings. Second. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Okay. All right. So I'll say uh, Karen. I. Marty. I. Uh, Doug. I. John. Aye. Dana. Aye. All right, I declare the motion passed. The next item up is to approve the bills for warrants number 39, 40, 42, 43, 44, and 45. 
Can I have a motion to approve those, please? Marty? I move that we approve uh, warrants 39, 40, 42, 43, 44, and 45. All right. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. All right. And any questions or comments? Okay. And so, uh, can, uh, Marty? I just do have a question. It's sort of for the record. What happened to 41? Warren 41 is not on that list, et cetera. Sure. I believe that was the week of Passover and I was not available to sign bills. And we decided to spare you all the burden of having to come in and review them and sign them. And then for Eileen to send them. So we just skipped over that week and consolidated them all into the next week. Thank you. Yeah. Glad we have that for the record. That makes sense. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, so uh, Karen, aye. Marty? Aye. Uh, Doug? Aye. John? Aye. And Dana? Aye. Okay, um, the next item we are discussing tonight is the MHC grant. And um, for these three items under new business, I will push it over to you, Beth. Thank you. Um, so we're starting with MHC grant, which is Mass Historic Commission. Um, they offer a grant round for preservation every other year or so, where they will do up to a 50% matching grant if a project is eligible as a restoration or preservation, not as a repair. So we worked with David L. King, who did a cupola restoration for us uh, that completed in 2004, the original architect on that project from 20 years ago. Um, came and looked with his engineer, examined the cupola, which started uh, leaking back in fall of 2022, um, and did some evaluation of the interior of the cupola, the flashing, the shingles, the wooden louvers, um, to determine what was causing it to leak intermittently. It's only really happened once uh, into the historic reading room. And then for him to develop a plan with his firm to remediate the leaking and restore it, so that it doesn't leak in the future, which would protect and preserve the room directly underneath, which was partially donor funded and renovated as part of our Mass Public Library Construction Program grant. So I worked with, um, with David King, um, a little bit with William Blake and various other trustees and departments in town to come up with an almost 200 page grant application that was due March 17th. Um, at that time, we still didn't have an estimate or had, hadn't done a leak test, didn't have all the information we needed, but um, we sent it, the application in, got a checklist of what was missing, and then had to the end of April to complete that grant and submit it, um, which we were able to do. We submitted every piece of the project, and then they had a question, which was the fine print of the grant is while they will do up to a 50% match, match, they require the grant recipient to have 75% of the cost of the project with cash in hand, because like many grants, it is a reimbursement grant. So the estimate to restore and preserve the cupola uh, from David King's professional estimator came out to $218,000 and a little bit, 218, 228, I believe is the final number, which requires a match of $109,114 from town of Grafton, from any pool of resources available. Now, I've brought this project to um, Capital Improvement Committee multiple times since we became aware in 2019 that it had potential to leak because there was normal wear and tear and weather deterioration on the cupola. Um, and without a quote in hand, I, I had only gotten a verbal estimate back in 2019 as we were working on the construction project, but without an actual quote which requires an investment of money to get somebody to get a team out to do the research and produce a quote, I couldn't get funding through Town of Grafton Resources. So not through CPC at that time, not through Community Preservation. Um, so, and I can't speak for say Community Preservation money. While it is an eligible project, they have their own paperwork and format to follow through. Um, CPC money is collected through tax revenue and then we vote on it at town meeting like tonight. So we couldn't get an estimate for the current issue until the end of April, which meant we couldn't get any money committed from any other town body in time to submit the remaining paperwork for the grant by the end of last month. 
The Board of Trustees has $170,000 right now in their state aid account, about $40,000 in expendable trust, um, and we have $33,000 in our gift account. So combining all those, we actually have the total needed to pay for the project. However, we committed at a previous meeting to pay $28,000, up to $28,000, I believe, for temporary staffing. And I'm frequently coming to this board for expenses that we had to trim from our operating expenses so, so we could put money in the staffing. Things that are sort of not really considered extra have been part of our operating expenses, but that we can't squeak the money out to pay for, like dues and membership, um, travel, marketing, staff development, and then unexpected bills. We do a very careful job of budgeting to the bone. And then even with our new building, things are coming out of warranty, problems arise, and we need to put money into things like emergency HVAC repair. Um, so while we have the money technically in all of the library coffers to cover the entire cost of the repair, it is grant eligible and some, not all of that money is really available because it's spoken for for other things. And we've been in the habit of keeping some money aside for emergencies that arise. The budget timeline is we're budgeting a year and a half out and can't always anticipate what the needs are going to be in the future. So, Mass Historic Commission received our application and said, well, I see that you wanna go to CPC to ask for money, but you've already missed the May town meeting deadline because their process started six months ago for tonight's funding for CPC projects. That means we have to push it out till October. And again, I can't speak for their money. So I'm requesting that the board demonstrate their stewardship of the building and agree to fund up to 50%, the matching part of the grant at $109,114, and had to send in an accounting sheet that shows that we actually have the 75% required match should expenses go over or should we not be able to secure any other town funding. It's a very long and complicated explanation. I was unclear at all. I'm happy to answer questions, but the question in front of you tonight is, can we commit $109,114? dollars um and i would need a letter of support from this board which karen had drafted one but there was a question mark and the original letter said up to twenty thousand dollars which is not a 50 percent match and without my ability to secure any other matching funds this is the only place that money could come from um and the if, if we should you can choose to vote no this is your money to administrate um should we vote no we would have to withdraw the grant application it's been a long time working on um, and then there would be no potential matching funding for probably another two years in the next grant round. And the cupola needs to be repaired. While it has not leaked again, we don't know when it will deteriorate and begin leaking again. And we wanna protect our assets. All right, uh, Beth, thank you so much for that detailed explanation there. So I'll put it out to the group here, uh, Doug. Um, yeah, nice. I mean, definitely a lot of work putting that together. Thanks for and thanks for the detailed email. The um, I had a couple questions. The the quote itself has anyone did anyone else review that? I, I don't know if anyone from like the building committee reviewed that. Um, I mean, I'm I'm always amazed the cost of things, so I'm not really surprised. But you know, there are some line items that seem super high that I was surprised at. Now. You know, regardless of the quote, right? If we go out, if it, if we go through with the project, you go out and get bids. That doesn't mean it's going to match that quote. It could be less. It could be more. Um, of course. So, yeah. did anyone on the building committee look at that yet, or not? So, the building committee, uh, their job is to take care of the construction project. Yeah, I know. So they're so at this point, their job is to either uh, ex, you know give feedback on things that we still have punch lists on that they might be happy or not happy with, and then to pay the bills. So as a sort of a new problem that arose during construction it's not really construction related and it falls to this board yep. okay. um, yeah we uh followed public procurement and that just to get someone to come out and do that preliminary work we had to you know go go out to bid and ask companies to submit a quote for how much the preliminary work would be so they could come up with a quote so basically the the cost of the the construction piece of the project is going to be you know it, quite a bit more, you know, $20,000 to get the preliminary estimate. And then it's you know, over $200,000 to execute what they think needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. So then my say, second, 
Oh. If we compare that to the construction grant, so you might not might or might not remember there was a preliminary grant round every time the mass, you know, public library program construction grant is in effect. And we spent you know seventy five thousand dollars I think to procure an architect who could do those drawings and schematics, and it, and our project ended up you know at sixteen point six million dollars total. So I don't know. It, it seems like it, it's close to what it would be. Uh, and we have to remember too that post COVID everything is so much more expensive. And just looking at our library project from the the estimate in twenty eleven, which was what like eleven point six million for a larger building, and then. Five years later for 2020 21, we have 16.6 .6 million for a small, a significantly smaller building. Construction escalation is ridiculously expensive. So the original quote, which was just a roofer looking at it and going, oh, it's going to cost you 80 grand to re remediate what's going on with your cupola, it's going to need some attention relatively soon. It's been, that was five years ago, almost five years ago. So price has gone up. <laughs> yeah. So then my second question was just a clarification. So the, the grant itself would pay for 50% of the cost. Does that include like if we were to get a CPC grant or that CPC grant would offset that 50 other 50%? Yeah, so they would award us a 50% match. So we would still be on the hook for $109,114. So then we would I would propose that you go to town meeting for October to try and get CPC to pay for some portion of that. Okay. Use the trustee contribution from whatever monies we have available. Great. Yeah, and, and I, I do also want to thank and note that Capital Campaign pay, has paid or committed to paying the initial $20,000 for that preliminary exploratory work to secure us the estimate and schematics and scope of work that were required for the grant application. So to, to sort of not move forward or drop it also kind of waste that $20,000 investment. Okay, um, all right. Thanks, Doug, for that question. Um, anyone else have a question? Yep, John? Uh, yeah, it's it's not so much a question, but because <clears throat> I saw that we didn't have an estimate for ongoing maintenance, uh, but, I, but I think that we should immediately come up with a plan for that after this, because essentially what what this two hundred thousand dollars equates to, you know, if let's say it lasts another twenty years, kind of un uh, un maintenanced, um, that's about ten grand a year. Uh, that and that seems like a lot of money to me. So maybe we could put in some some uh, maintenance plan to say spend twenty grand every five years, or or hopefully much less than that, to just go in and and make sure that you know, uh, the paint isn't uh, completely peeling off and that uh, things haven't uh, been ripped off the cupola by wind or, or other, you know, birds or whatever it is. So that's just my, my thoughts on that. Thank you, John, with that. Uh, Marty? Oh, you're on mute. Ah. I beg your pardon. My my, my question is not uh, is, is not responsive to John, but I don't mean to diminish anything that John just asked. But vis-a-vis -vis what we are being asked to do tonight, we've got somebody's got to frame a motion on this in some way, and I'm not sure that I understand it quite. Well enough. We're being asked to approve a request for a grant. Is that exactly what it is? Or could you just sort of restate it again in a way, in a way that encapsulates what we are going to either going going to vote on, whether we approve or not? I'm not sure. Sure. Um, I am looking for a motion to approve a newly drafted letter of support from the Board of Library Trustees committing up to $109,114 as a match for the Mass Historic Commission Preservation Grant Round. Okay. Um, Beth, um, I just want to ask, no, so that's half, but were they asking for us to make, oh, so they only want to make sure we have the 75%. We don't have to commit the 75 
Correct. They wanted okay. um, account reports that showed okay. balances right. totaling up to, I think it's a hundred, almost 164,000 held. Okay. Reserve. I, I do want to go back. Somebody asked about like, has anybody else looked at this? There wasn't, I tried to make, like, I don't know who else would have looked at it with, with it coming on the 26th of April and due on the 28th, there was no time for anyone else to review it. But William Blake looked at it and he's been, he's been doing some procurement for the town and some construction stuff for the town. And we didn't have more or different or better estimates because we did, again, we followed public procurement. We asked, I think, six or eight different contractors who specialize in historic buildings and only one contractor got back to us. So that fulfills our procurement request, but also means that we didn't have anything to compare it to, just to be clear. No one was interested in the project enough to pull something together. Okay, uh, Dana. Um, yeah, I um, yeah, I I understood. I appreciate what Beth just said as far as the the review of the question, but I understand it. Um, yeah, I what you just pointed out. I was going to say, my my understanding is this is an estimate, so we can really refine it. We needed it. We needed this estimate as soon as possible. So um, I think I think we did the due diligence that we can do at this point. We can do more later once you know once we have a grant in hand. And um, I think that um, I think it's a very worthy project. I think we should be we should do it. I do think we did discuss prior to this that we want to be able to. One of the issues that Grafton has is we have no facilities manager. And so we will have to figure out if that situation remains. So we as trustees are going to have to figure out a way. I guess we're going to be we're, we're going to have to be facility managers for our building and ensure that any of this, anything that needs to be done in the future will be done for maintenance, which is huge. And what has been pointed out to me is that we've had some issues with um like the um, the uh, air conditioning and the H HVAC, some of this stuff is we have to remember we were we um, chose the we had by I guess we had to choose the lowest bidder, and so that resulted in some of the systems probably not being state of the art. So that's I think why we're feeling some of the pain from some of the um, monies we now have to put into some of these new systems. So. I think the cupola falls within that line. We're going to have to, we're going to have to really um, monitor it. You know, not unless there's another party within the within the town that steps up to do that. And I think that's that is a good thing to discuss because I think that's a reality right now. And who knows if that's going to change in mm -hmm. three or four years? I don't know. So that's what I wanted to say, and I. Um, David King is a very good architect. He, I would trust that he would come up with a good estimate. And he, my understanding is he's going to be over, he's going to be supervising this project, which I think is a really necessary element. And I would approve any extra monies that he might have to spend to do that. Speaking of that, there is, there is no contingency built into this grant. Um, MHC does not allow for you to, to build in an extra 20% or so for things that unexpectedly go wrong. Um, so although the 218,000 is an estimate, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be that price. It could be more, it could be less, but there's, there's no contingency and that would have to come from another source. So that might be another piece of why they want you to have that 75% cash in hand because things sometimes do escalate unexpectedly. Um, I, I do also- I, Yeah, I have another question, but- I, I was just going to say, um, I understand that, but I think it, my understanding now is this is much greater than I thought of a grant we could get. You're telling me that if our quote is like 218,000, they would give us 50% of that if they think, if they deem that we are worthy. So that is fantastic because last year I looked through most of the uh, grants I saw were between 40 and 50,000. And there was there was a library, but it wasn't a, a general a library like we have. So that means they've they're they're showing interest in our application, which I like a lot. And Beth has spent a lot of time with them, and they have given to the town of Grafton before. So I'm feeling better about this, and um, I think I think if we if we can make this happen, it, it's really 
it's really terrific. And I, I think there's a good chance we can get it. And then that will help us also be able to get some more monies from other, other parties because we've already, we've been given a grant from this group again. And that is really big to get a mass pres preservation grant. Uh, that is really a, a big thing, especially it's, if it's at this level. All right. All right. Thank you. Is that right, Doug? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify some things about the trusts. Well, first of all, I, I do think it's, I mean, it's its the town's responsibility. I think the, the right funding source would have been one of those capital projects. Um, so for the library trust accounts, some of those do have exclusions. You know, they have to be, they have to be, you know, for books or something. I think the largest one, which is at Fisher and the Wheelock are both for structure and infrastructure. So I think those are both relevant for the cupola. If I, I I'll have to go through them again, but I think so that, which is a good thing, because those are the ones that have the most money. Um, I'm not sure about the library incentive state grant. Um, Beth, can you clarify? I didn't, I know that's for services, but I didn't know if that, um, I mean, if I look at their, the, the website, it says to support improved library, public libraries, I'm sorry, public library service. But I don't know if that means we can use that to expense on some of the building. Okay. I would have to follow up with MBLC. I thought that they were all unrestricted. Okay. I mean, maybe it just, in, yeah. I mean, it says it encourages, so maybe it is unrestricted, but okay. I would say that if if the historic reading room would need to be closed off because the ceiling plaster is falling onto the heads of patrons, they can't use that room, which is full of graphic novels, magazines, newspapers, and is used daily as study space. So it would prohibit people from using that space as a library service. Yep. And and then the only other comment is, right, if we take money away, let's say we take it from the library incentive, that's going to reduce the amount we're going to have for any future use. Um, we have been saving it up, right? We've been saving it yeah. for many years for yeah. for this pro this construction process project. Well, only a few years a after COVID, um, we started getting a lot more in-state aid. So when I started ten years ago, we were averaging about twenty thousand a year, and it's crept up. I think this year we stood to to take in forty two thousand dollars. Uh, oh, okay, so it's only been a so, couple of years. Yeah, so we'll expend, and then you know we're getting another check, and I think by July first, and then another one around December for the next half of the year. So the money is continuously coming in so long as you know the legislature continues to vote to put money into state aid. It's only gone up in the last 10 years. Knock on wood, it will continue. Very good. All right, um, any other comment or is someone ready to make a motion? Thank you. I, I, I need a little more clarity on, on, on but okay. um, again, Beth, I, I'm sorry to be okay. dense here, but I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with them in my head that either we do this or we're cooked. We, we have to wait two years to try again. And if there is damage that must be uh, repaired, we may not have the funds to repair the damage um, from a leaky cupola that, that could God, I mean, water can do a lot of damage. So yeah. it seems to me we, the choices are between committing money um, or and g getting other people's money to help us are not and being in, in potentially in a lot of trouble. I don't, I don't see a way out of, of doing this other than making the request, um, my opinion. Um, so what we need is a letter of support from, from the Board of Trustees, which I take it would come from the chair, Karen, um, to commit $109,114 as a match for a grant from the, from the Mass Historical uh, Commission. Uh, does it need any more detail than that? So I took the letter that Karen had drafted, uh, yeah, so. made some edits, and then shared it out. So. Oh, this is, this is the revised letter? Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the original letter didn't have those numbers. Right. I, I, I missed the fact that the re revised letter was in our, our package. I'm, I apologize for that. Um, I figured if Karen didn't want me to do it and wasn't happy with it, she would have spoken up and we would have pulled it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the very passionate plea at the beginning about Tana Grafton and the historic district is, is all hers. 
So I updated the twenty thousand dollar request. All right. So, uh, Karen, I'm prepared to make a, a motion, which is okay. as follows: I will move that we approve the letter of support from the board of trustees by you as chair. Um, that has been drafted. Um, I don't have. I don't know the date on it. Uh, is there a date on it? May, I put today's May. date. All right, dated May 8, 2023, to commit $109,114 uh, to repair the cupola uh, as a match for a grant from the Massachusetts Historical Commission. Can we use All restore right. and preserve instead of repair? It's a flag for the grant funders. All right, so as Sorry. a match yeah. for a grant Restore uh, and preserve. Massachusetts Historical Commission to preserve yeah. and protect and protect um, the enduring visual charm. Is that what we're asking for? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Marty. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Wonderful. Any further discussion? Hey, okay, hearing none. Uh, Karen, aye. Marty? Aye. Doug? Aye. John? Aye. Dana? Aye. All right, I declare the motion carried. Thank you very much, everyone. That was a big one. All right, now they just go down in funding requests. So now we're down to $4,500. A uh, big difference there for the circuit board for the door opener. Beth. So the uh, door for the parking lot, which are ADA compliant, also have an electronic configured where you can wave at the button either as you come in, in the middle of the vestibule or go out, that makes the doors open. And they are fairly heavy. And the doors have been there for more than a year, so they're not under warranty anymore. And the circuit board that talked to the automatic door opener button failed unexpectedly, um, and we needed to do an emergency repair. Um, the cost of the equipment and the installation and the diagnostics from Chandler, who is the vendor for the door, was $4,500. Um, it's outside of the scope of the construction project and the bill needs to be paid. It's not maintenance, it is an emergency repair. And what does this actually include? Um, diagnostics, the piece of equipment, which is a circuit board and the installation of the circuit board and then reconnection to get the buttons to work again when you wave at them. So, and, and the work has been done. It was completed um, around the 20th of April. Yeah, so basically right now we are voting on paying this bill. So this is just a quote, we will get an invoice. It, it's gonna be exactly this cost. Yeah, uh, that sort of thing. All right, Marty? This is, and this is from regular funds. This is not from state aid, is that correct? No, it's from state aid. There's no money in the building and maintenance budget to cover the cost because we're at May and that budget has been just about expended with all the things that we had planned to spend on building maintenance okay. throughout the fiscal year. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just say that, I mean, I don't, I know computers and stuff, but uh, $4,500 to replace a circuit board sounds pretty steep to me, <laughs> especially if it failed after one year about, uh, do, I guess, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna have any problem approving this, but I'm just curious if we know if this is likely to happen again, like, is this from people smashing the, you know, the button too hard or, or is it something that just, you know, it just failed uh, by chance? It just failed. And you know, similarly, there's, there's sections of our HVAC system that just are failing. Mm. So, and I, like, I can't budget for unexpected mechanical or equipment or technology failure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Doug? Can you remind us if, I mean, I'm sure we approached them for warranty. I mean, it's pretty unusual for 
circuit boards to fail at all in in most cases. (laughs) Yeah, I know. So we technically had substantial completion on July 1st, 2021, and the doors were operable and installed on that date. So we're sort of like coming up on two years and just well past warranty phase and they would not honor it under warranty. It was just bad timing for something that does not typically happen. Okay, and um, because we're voting on next year's budget tonight at town meeting, so it's too late to put this into next year's budget and pay them after July 1st. You, uh, we can't, the work took place in this fiscal year, so it has to be paid in this fiscal year. Okay, all right. I mean, Thank we're you. already, we are, we're also net 30 for Town of Grafton, so invoices are right. supposed to be paid and often there's a penalty mm-hmm. if they're late. All right, we can't yeah. push it out. All right, uh, Dana? Sorry to say, I think this is an example of what some of the great products that we didn't get, you know, some of the great equipment we didn't get. I think we got, you know, it wasn't terrific. It wasn't the most expensive out there. I don't know. This is what I think we're going to see happening a bit here and there for a while. But Let's hope anyway, not. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't like what I I'm here already. And we weren't, I don't know how operational the building was. I know it was open, but for a while people weren't in it, if I recall. Yeah. So, and then we had COVID, right? So, um, I'm not. Mm-hmm. It is what it is, and I don't like it. But what can we do? Hopefully, we can have money set aside next year if we can, or the or the year after. Maybe even if mm-hmm. we just start putting a bit aside, you know, we got to maintain the building. It's new. It's going to have problems, but unfortunately, mm-hmm. I don't think this is the last of them. But I don't know, maybe it's just a couple of main systems. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to say. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I just thought I'd throw that in. But okay. yeah, we got it. We, we, we've got to okay this. All right. So um, any other comments or is someone ready to make a motion to pay this from state yeah, aid? I'll, I'll make a motion to pay the $4,500 um, out of state aid. Okay. I Do second I hear it. a second? All right, I second you. it. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll say uh, Karen, I, Marty. Aye. Doug. Aye. John. Aye. Dana. Aye. All right, I declare the motion passed. Um, the last item on our agenda this evening is a funding request, $2,500 for HVAC maintenance. And this would also come out of state aid. Yeah. So this is kind of like a a timing issue. Um, HVAC is contracted through the building department for all town buildings. So I just get a notification of how much the estimate is so that I can put it into my next year's budget and cover the cost. Um, Again, we we opened in July, 2021. Um, My budget for FY22 was due that November, December. um, And I didn't have the estimate until way you know way past the budget was approved and Renaud came to do the first part of the contract and we had to sort of figure out how we were going to pay for that we've basically been about a payment behind in having our ongoing HVAC maintenance completed just because of the timing of my not getting the estimate that I needed to build it into the budget and pay for it out of the budget So we were going to have three payments of like $5,000 due within the one fiscal year when ordinarily we should only have two payments because it's semi-annual maintenance. So I went to them and said like, I I can't keep trying to push the bill off um, and and it needs to get paid. So we owe them $5,000 that isn't covered in the contract, that wasn't covered by a purchase order, that wasn't covered in the budget. They cut the bill in half, and I said, let me try and find the money to finish paying up what's owed so we can get back on track with our regularly scheduled contracted work. So this is a partial service fee. It's half of what we actually owe them, and it's for preventative maintenance. They come in the fall to make sure all the filters are clean so we can turn on the heating system, and they just came out at the end of April when we had the very warm day, actually it was mid-April, to make sure that everything was clean and ready to switch over to air conditioning. 
All right. Thanks for that explanation, Beth. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions or comments before we get a motion here? No? Okay. Um, so would someone like to make a motion to pay for this out-of-state aid? Marty? I, I move that we pay the Renault bill for a, HVAC out-of-state aid in the amount of $2,500. All right. Thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All right. Any further questions or comments? All right. Hearing none, I'll say Karen, I. Marty? Aye. Doug? Aye. John? Aye. And Dana? Aye. All right. I declare the motion carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, let's see. The next few items on the agenda are tabled till the next meeting. So our next meetings are now the town meeting tonight at 7 p.m. at the high school, uh, at which time Beth will be answering any questions that may arise about the library budget. And then the next Board of Library Trustees meeting is May 24th at 7 p.m. Um, any last minute things here? Yep, Roger? Okay, yeah, um, I'm reserving my uh, comments on the Roman numeral eight <laughs> public. Oh, <comment>. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you, Karen and, and Marty for your service. Um, you know, that's it's uh, not everyone wants to serve on a committee. Not everyone wants to take leadership positions. Um, there's so much that goes on, you know, behind the scenes, too. And so I um, just wanted to, to make that comment as you end your terms. All right. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you very okay. much. Roger. Thank you, Roger. Thank hey, you. Uh, Carrie, I see your hand up. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Yes. Hi. Sorry. I was trying to start the video and unmute at the same time. So sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> So um, I'd like to second Roger's um, uh, you know, appreciation for yourself, Karen, and for Marty. Thank you for your wonderful service. Um, we're so appreciative, you know, of, of all the time that you've committed um, and, you know, the, the dedication. Um, so the next meeting you said is going to be May 24th. Um, so will you be planning to attend those that next meeting? I'm actually going to be out of town at a conference. So I would not be attending it even if I was still on the board. So, <laughs> okay. Well, um, thank you again, and um, and I, I also would like to to thank the board for uh, stepping up to approving the repairs. Um, sorry, the restoration and pre and and pre yeah, restoration and um, preservation of our beautiful cupola. Um, mm -hmm. I think that um, you know, really shows a, a good commitment to our library by our, our board and it's um, very much appreciated. So thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Okay, and I'll just mention thanks to Roger and Carrie for coming to some of our meetings. So you're ready um, for <laughs> um, your places on the board. All right, I'm, so I'm excited. for a lot of opportunity. Yes, thank you. wonderful. So um, I declared the meeting adjourned at 5.44 p.m. No, 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 you never mind, vote. erase that, erase that. All right, yeah, right. Beth? There's a good try, we have to vote to adjourn, but I, no, I had raised my hand to also say thank you to Karen yeah. and Marty, uh, and remind people to come out and vote on the 16th next week, so we can vote in our next trustees. Thank you, Roger and Carrie. For Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I don't right, say so I have a motion to adjourn before I yeah. unilaterally do it myself. I so. just want to <laughs> say thanks, Karen. And thanks, Marty. <laughs> Doug and I both thank you. We yes, appreciate thank it. You. you guys. Have done All right, awesome. Marty. Yes. It's my last official act as a <laughs> I move that we adjourn. Ah, wonder. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? I second it. All right. Any questions or comments? All right. So Karen, I. Uh, Marty? Gratefully, I. All right. Doug? I. John? I. And Dana? I. All right. I declare the meeting adjourned at 5.45 p.m.